Hiya. This is an idea me and my fabulous library colleagues have come up with, okay? Because we're all stuck at home and we really miss you. Um, so, we're going to do some really lovely bedtime stories that you can sit and listen to. And you can laugh at my little dog. This is Carrie, okay? I've got a big dog somewhere, but he's really grumpy, so you're stuck with me and Carrie, I'm afraid. Okay, here we go. Now, this is from a book. It's very tatty because I've had it years and it belonged to my little girl, who's now not a little girl. She's a lot older. So this book's been around for a long time, but it was one of her favourite books and I used to read to her overnight. She'd probably tell me off if I did it now. So I'm enjoying this, okay? So let's have a listen. This is called The Song of Spring. There was once a little bird who lived in a tree on the edge of a wood. All year long she was as busy as could be. In spring she chose a site for her new nest and gathered twigs and moss to build it. She, then she laid her eggs and settled down to hatch them. She only left the eggs for seconds at a time when she hopped off to find a quick snack. It was during one of these very short breaks that something strange happened in the little bird's nest. When she returned, one of her eggs seemed to have grown bigger. That's odd, said the little bird to herself. It has never happened before. But the egg was the right shape and the right colour. The little bird wondered if she had become so tired sitting on the eggs that she could no longer think properly. She decided to have a quick snooze and settled down comfortably once again. Carrie, you're licking my leg, what's going on? Sorry about that. Okay, day after day, the little bird sat on her nest, keeping the eggs snug and warm. Soon I shall hear the first little tap tap, she said to herself. Then I shall see my darling little children. I can hardly wait. Sure enough, the little bird woke one morning to a tiny sound under her feathers. Tap, tap, tap. Soon a little crack appeared in one of the eggs and a tiny orange beak poked through. It was followed by a sleepy little head and a damp little body. Then the new nestling sat quietly in the sun until his feather dried. The little bird hardly had time to feel proud of her son before another tap, tap, tap came from one of the other eggs. Once again, a little beak was followed by a little bird and now there was two. The little bird had to wait until evening for a third egg to hatch. The baby was just as beautiful as the first two. The mother bird looked at the last egg. It was the largest one of all. And she listened hard, but she could hear no tap, tap, tapping. Surely the egg was not going to be much longer. One day passed and then another. The little bird did not know what to do. She needed to fly off and to find food for her three little nestlings. But she didn't like to leave the unattached egg, unhatched egg. At last there was a very loud tap, tap, tap. And the last egg cracked in two. Out hopped a very strange bird indeed. The mother bird felt a thrill of fear. She knew exactly what this bird was. It was a cuckoo. If she was not careful, it would push her other babies out of the nest. The baby cuckoo stared at its mother and opened its beak. It already wanted food. All right, said the bird, I'll feed you, but you must promise me not to harm any of my other babies. 
If you do, I will push you right out of the nest. Do you understand me? Quack! The young cuckoo understood very well. That spring, the mother bird exhausted herself finding food for her brood. And at last the day came when they flew away from the nest. It was sad for the mother, but her heart swelled with pride when she heard a bird singing far away. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! That's my boy, she said. Sleep tight.